Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. I tell you, we have all these traditions, all these traditional holidays. And when you have traditional holidays, one thing about it, the Lord will use them too to communicate his messages. And today I'm talking about the sins of the father, because you've spent many times, some of you all listeners, many times celebrating Father's Day. Some of you all celebrated it in a way that was hurtful. It was a way to go about uh, creating all sorts of unnecessary confusion and chaos because your father really was someone who you didn't feel like honoring because of all of the things that he did in the past. So your idea of celebrating was, I'm just going to pay people back. I'm just going to speak my mind. I'm just going to avoid buying gifts and anything else because this man has done absolutely nothing for me. And then some of you all, you have a great relationship with your father. And you actually want to be like him, you know, in the sense of helping out your children and, and doing a number of other things. But you see, there are those that father was around, but father also had his share of issues that stems from the way his father treated him. And so he never got the help that he needed to overcome those personal demons. And he allowed all of the issues from the past to affect him in such a way where he just doesn't even see his wrongs. He doesn't even face his wrongs. He doesn't even want to do anything to better himself emotionally, physically, or spiritually because, well, the mind has told him that he's all right. And, and so daddy's message, daddy's past issues and things of that sort, they just sit on him like sores. They ooze every now and again. Sometimes he picks at them. They heal. And then he ends up injuring himself and he takes a Band-Aid and he puts it on him, on his skin. And then next thing you know, it's infected and everything else. He doesn't want to go to the doctors to take care of his situation. And so all of these things start happening to his body. Mentally, physically, spiritually, everything, because there are those old wounds that never healed correctly. There are those mental issues that never got the counseling that needed that they uh, needed to uh, be uh, dealt with. And, and then there's the 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 physical things that he never overcomes because of some things in the back of his mind that keep him from doing what needs to be done. So there's a whole healing process that needs to take place inside and out. But what keeps him, what keeps him, what keeps him going through these issues? Shall we say the sins of the father? So I'm going to take you through some scriptures because see, God doesn't like disobedience. God doesn't like people who are always saying, how great, how wonderful, how they, you know, are the best since sliced bread, so to speak. He doesn't like people like that. Because he knows that people like that consider themselves many gods. And so sometimes he has to allow some things to happen to make man say, oh, yeah, that's right. There is a God. Oh, yes, I, I'll receive prayer today. Oh, yes, I better start going to church. Oh, you know what? I need to start listening more to the word. You need to do something because your days are numbered, says the Lord. Those that keep falling away from the Lord, your days are numbered. In First Kings chapter 15, verse 3, it says in the NIV version, he committed all the sins his father had done before him. His heart was not fully devoted to the Lord, his God, as the heart of David, his forefather had been. So you see, this issue was going on even way back when. OK, and so this is what some little boys who grew up to become men do. They end up committing the sins of their father and their heart, of course, is never devoted to the Lord. It's more devoted to the women and the money. And the material things. In Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 14. It says. But suppose this son has a son. Who sees all the sins his father commits. And though he sees them. He does not do such things. There are those men. Who do not do what their fathers have done. 
and therefore their lives are much different than their father's. Praise the Lord. He's not cheating on his wife. He's not oppressing the poor and needy. He's not robbing people. He's not uh, violating promises, saying one thing and doing another. He's not looking to idols and he's not getting himself involved with det detestable people and things. And he's not borrowing on loans and uh, or t taking out loans with excessive interest. And the Bible speaks about all of those things. You see, there are some sons who find out very quickly that they need God and they need God badly. And so they don't do what their fathers have done. And then we're warned in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, the soul who sins is the one who will die. Some people need to be reminded of that. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him. You see, that's what matters, not your last name, not what others have done before you. What matters is, are you a righteous man or not? This business of, I'm just like my daddy, my daddy was this and that, and you're making prideful statements about negative things. My daddy had a lot of women and I got a lot of women, and you think God is blessing you with all of that? You're mistaken. God is not blessing you with things that's going to lead you away from him. He blesses you with things that are going to lead you toward him. And some of you all who listen, listen to rappers and you watch celebrity movies and things of that sort, what you fail to realize is that a lot of what they promote has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And that's why you keep dealing with the things that you're dealing with, because you allow garbage to infiltrate your mind and it suppresses the spirit man inside of you. And therefore, you never really hear from the Lord like you ought and so in Ezekiel it says the righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him and don't we see many many men young men boys murdered over wickedness and then there are those who just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time but is it really just happened or is the sins of the father manifesting those thoughts, those ideas, those actions of the past? Are they really catching up with those who say that, well, my son just happened to be there at the wrong time? The offspring of the sinful father doesn't even have a chance, especially if the offspring is not interested in the Lord. Young people, take heed if you've come across this message. Take heed. Take heed. In Mark chapter 11, verse 25, it says, And when you stand praying, because I urge my listeners to pray, pray right now, pray that you get some understanding as far as what God is talking about when it comes to the sins of your father and how they play a part in your life today and why it is that you keep struggling and why it is that you have this anger on the inside towards your father and why you don't want to get married and why you don't want to have children in the future and why you fear what's going to happen to you as a result of what your father has done. You need to go to the Lord and you need to pray. Pray every day, seek the Lord every day until you get some answers and then seek them some more for, for uh, some uplift in your spirit because you're going to need it. You're going to need it because each of us has something within us that no matter who we're around and what we do, we'll always see our dads in us. Moving on in Mark 11, chapter 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Son. Child of God. Forgive your father. Says the Lord. Forgive your father. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 6 says. Let your ear be attentive. And your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying. Before you day and night for your servants the people of Israel. 
I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. Sometimes we have to confess our sins and the things that we've done as a result of our fathers and what they have told us. And even back then, there were men of God, women of God that had to go and confess sins. Things that happened in their father's house that they ended up taking outside their father's house and doing elsewhere. Sometimes you got to go back to people and tell them, I'm sorry. I wasn't taught right. I wasn't raised right. I listened to people back in the day that were my father's friends. And I thought that it was okay to do what I did. And I'm sorry. And then you go to the Lord and you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of the things that I did. I thought I was being cool. I thought I was doing the right thing, acting like my dad. Because, well, you know, the hood that I grew up in and the people that I was around. Well, you know, my dad liked those people. My dad hung with those people. My dad was cool in the group. And I thought if I did it, I was okay. And I'm, I forget, forgive me, Lord Jesus, I'm wrong. I'm so wrong. And then you've got to start distancing yourself away from certain people, places, and things that's keeping you bound to your father's sins. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 15 it says, but if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. So things that you've done and then they, the people retaliated and they paid you back, if you will. And now you want to hold bitter feelings against folks. You've got to forgive some folks. You're going to have to go to the Lord and ask him for that godly kind of forgiveness. In Galatians chapter one, verse four who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. So it all comes back to, once again, the Lord going to him with our sins and asking him to rescue us from all of this evil that is around us and also in us. Because this is the Father's will. Some of you all want to know what the Father's will is. Well, this is 101. Okay, basic 101 instruction is that you've got to get to that place where you see your sin and you know what your sin has done to others as well as yourself. You've got to go to the Lord with it, start cutting away things and keeping yourself as much as you can. Away from evil. Uh, so many people want to know about the will of the Lord, thinking that it's all about money all of the time. If you're serving the Lord in the Bible, it's not always about money. Matter of fact, God is not interested in blessing men with money. He's interested in saving souls. So don't get the one true God, the God of Noah, Abraham, and Isaac confused with the money God, the one eye God, the God with many arms, the God with breasts the, and a face like a goat. Don't get yourself confused with gods who love blood, gods who mix blood with blood. Don't get yourself confused with gods of nature, gods of sun gods of water and gods of women gods that look like women shape like women act like women don't get yourself caught up in those gods because those gods are not here to serve us those gods are here to destroy man those gods are here to bind man up and spit them out because once they have given a little bit they expect you to give your soul your whole life you've got to be careful where you're going, who you're going with, what type of statues are around, what kind of pictures are hanging up. You've got to be careful. Be very careful of the individuals out there who you think are so successful, so wise, so smart. Because behind them are demonic gods. Some of them are walking in the shadow of death. And they're not true believers. There are fake Jews. There are fake 
people out here who look like God, so to speak, you know, look like God in a sense of they have Christian ways about them. You see, there's those that act like gods. They come so close to biblical truth, but then as you spend more time with them, you realize that their doctrines are twisted and they're more about appeasing the flesh. But God's gospel is about appeasing the spirit. Watch what music you're listening to. Your daddy listened to that song. Listen to that artist. And he cheated on your mom. And then your daddy did that same song and dance with some other people. And the next thing you know, your daddy is six feet deep. Be careful listening to your daddy's song, dancing to your daddy's song, writing your daddy's song, acting like your daddy, getting up on a stage and doing all sorts of things like your daddy because you don't know what your daddy had to do to get what he got. God is an awesome God. He knows what we need. He knows what is best for us. Get around like-minded Christians. Get around people who study the Bible. And I thank you for listening.